What images come to your mind when you see or hear the word culture? If you were to ask me personally, I would say food, because who doesn't love to bond over a great meal? But have you thought about the implications of culture on language? And more importantly, how culture can impact our everyday communication? Just by a show of hands, how many of you speak a language other than English or know someone who does? Take a moment to look around you because almost all of you have raised your hand. Having grown up both within the United States and Iran, I have been exposed to two very different and unique ways of life, each with their own distinct culture. But it was only when I started to teach English in Iran that I began to understand the dynamic, the dynamic relationship between culture and language. Culture can impact what we communicate verbally and non-verbally. And to demonstrate that to you today, I'd like to reflect on some of my English language teaching experiences. You can understand the shock on my face when my student addressed me as master. For a second, I didn't know how to respond. Was this a scene from Karate Kid? Was I Master Miyagi and my student Daniel's son? Wax on, wax off. However, with the help of one of my colleagues, I came to understand that one of the Persian words for teacher when translated to English has a similar definition to master, highlighting and signifying the high degree of respect a student holds for his or her teacher. Or another time when after a long and stressful day of teaching, my student stopped me and said in the calmest and smoothest of voices, don't be tired. I wasn't sure what to make of that. Was I being encouraged or mocked because of my teaching efforts? When I told a colleague of mine, she said that the statement that my student had uttered was similar to a simple thank you in the English language. However, it differed in that the connotation of the expression underlined the, me the mental and physical efforts that I had put into class that day. Now, culture is not only limited to verbal modes of communication, but can also impact nonverbal communication as well. Think about body gestures for a second. Let's say that you and I were having a conversation, much like the one that we're having right now, and I decided to fold my arms. What would you make of that? For one, it could mean that I'm cold. But what could it potentially reveal about my personality? Here in the United States, folding your arms is associated with being unfriendly, distant, or standoffish. But what if I told you that the same exact body gesture has a completely different connotation in another environment, like East Asia and the Middle East? In that context, folding your arms is a sign of contemplation and wisdom indicating that you are wholeheartedly thinking about what has been said to you to provide the best possible response. Now, oftentimes, there are even cultural concepts and notions that are virtually non-existent in another environment. Take, for instance, the Persian cultural concept of taruf. Simply put, taruf is a staple and integral part of the Persian culture, emphasizing polite gestures, and cultural pleasantries in a wide array of situations. And here's what it looks like. For me, going out to eat looks very different depending on whether I'm with my Persian or non-Persian friends. With my non-Persian friends, it's a very peaceful and tranquil experience. When the bill comes, everyone pays for the meal they had separately, and we leave. However, it's a completely different story when I'm out with my Persian friends. It's a battlefield as we try to snatch the bill from the waiter to proclaim victorious and paying for everyone. Now, this might seem strange, 
But this is a sign of hospitality within the Persian culture, indicating that you have greatly enjoyed the other person's presence and they are your guest for the meal. This can even go to extremes as we arrive earlier at a restaurant just to provide our credit card. So our guest has absolutely no chance of paying. So take it from me. Make sure you have some Persian friends. That way, you'll never have to pick up the bill. Cultural concepts such as taruf are even more difficult to grasp for individuals not familiar with the context. So you can imagine the puzzling look on my European's friend's face when he came to Iran for the first time. And the cab driver told him that he didn't have to pay the fare, saying something along the lines of, it's not worthy of you. Next thing you know, the same cab driver is shouting and yelling at him. Where do you think you're going, pal? You forgot to pay the fare. My friend, unaware of the cultural concept of taruf, solely relied on his understanding of language, which led him to literally take the offer. However, it is this cultural knowledge that makes it known that it's customary for service personnel to refuse payment two or three times as a sign of hospitality, all while expecting the payment to be completed in the end. Now, keep in mind, all of the examples that we have talked about today represent a very micro scale of the present-day multiculturalism that exists. Currently, there are around 1.35 billion English speakers around the world out of which around one billion also speak a language other than English, which consciously and unconsciously brings with itself cultural norms and perceptions which may influence and impact their English communication. And the United States is a wonderful example of a multicultural environment. As of 2018, there are around 67 million individuals who speak a language other than English right here. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is any of this important? Well, firstly, fostering and developing an appreciation that each and every single culture brings something to this table called life. And secondly, for me personally, this is important because as an English language instructor and doctoral student here at Texas A&M, I feel responsible for paying forward this knowledge to the future generation of educators so that they not only know what to provide in the classroom in terms of the language that is accurate and appropriate, but also takes into co context the richness and culture that these individuals possess. Which brings the question, what can we do when the landscape is so rich? Realistically and practically speaking, we cannot be expected to know every single thing there is about the wide array of cultures that exist. But if there's one thing that I would like for you to take away from this talk today, it's this, that just because individuals act and say things that may slightly differ from our norms and perceptions does not mean that they are wrong and we are right. Rather, it offers a different lens and perspective of looking into life. One that you and I might be interested in learning a little bit more about. Thank you.